I um, as I walk you guys through the as I walk you through this sheet, I want you to understand that you're going to be doing it for the project, this project, next project, and you are also going to be tested on it. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do it on by hand. Okay, so this is coming tomorrow or, the, or today if we finish this one on time. Step by step how to do all these by hand. Now we're going to do it with Excel. Okay, so do me a favor. Let's go. Uh, grab your code book because I really would like you guys to be with me with the code book too. Um, but first, first of all, here's what your sheet should achieve. Here's what your sheet should achieve. And I'm going to delete this one there at the end. Your sheet should achieve the following. Um, oops. I just want you to get the full picture. Um, your sheet should achieve the following. You have the service. Can you guys see at the top? It says SP. That's your service panel. SPN. Anybody guess what the SPN is? The neutral, calculating the neutral. RP, anybody can guess what RP is? Receptacle panel, receptacle panel. How about RPN? Anybody can guess? Absolutely. How about LP? And LPN. Thank you. So these are the ones that we are very sizing. These are the ones that we're sizing. So I want you to, so you, you start, uh, I always say start from the end. Here's what, what your riser is going to look like. And I want you guys to... As we go forward, to know how the um, how this connected to the riser. Give me one second here. A service panel. Okay, do me a favor um, and help me here, uh, Jeff, when I write them. So here's what you guys have. You're gonna have a bunch of panels. Uh, how we're gonna do that? We're gonna do them on the. Or let's go do our riser. Here's my riser. This is my building. And you guys are going to have a bunch of panels. Panel number one, right on the wall here. This is going to be my, I call it SP panel in my calculation. Right next to it is going to be another panel. And I'm going to call this is RP panel. And right next to it, there's a, a third panel. And I'm going to call this LP panel. S for service panel, right? And RP is receptacle panel. You can call them P1, P2, P3 if you want to. I just, I want to match what I wrote on my calculation so it puts it together. So here's what we're doing. This is inside. This is your riser. So this is inside when you do your riser. This will be obviously the ground here. This is out, outside. What do you guys think this would be in? Inside. Yeah, you can see that inside, and this is how the power is going to be coming for this building for the most part. We're going to have, a, um, depending on what size, what you c come up with, we're going to come up, guys, with the termination box right here sitting. This will be my termination box. I'm going to come up from underground into my panel. From my panel, I'm going to take uh, one feed. To feed my receptacle panel and another feed to feed my lighting panel. Does that make sense? So that's what you riser. That's the riser that you're going to do with me. The reason why I'm showing the riser right now here, because you are doing calculation to get you the size of the service panel, the size of the receptacle panel, and the size of the LP, the lighting panel. So the project that you guys are doing, it's going to have three panels. Can I get you guys to understand it's going to have three panels? One for all the lights, one for all the receptacles, and one for every, everything in the whole building, right? The main panel. The service panel or the main panel is going to have all the lights, all the receptacles, and all the mechanical equipment put from it. So before we move ahead, do you guys think lighting panel is going to have lights only? Receptacle panel is going to have receptacle only? What do you guys think the service panel is going to have? So have at least two loads, all the receptacle load and all the lighting load as big chunk. What else? What else are we missing? How about mechanical pan, mechanical equipment? Mechanical equipment, uh, air handling unit, chillers, you name it. They're going to be fit from where? The main panel. Okay. So can you guys see how the riser is coming to, together? What you're going to do? So when you guys do the calculation, here's what you're supposed to do for your friend, Chad. Uh, you're supposed to size... First of all, we need to size the panel itself. So I'm going to start by um, and, uh, by sizing the panel. So I want to first I want to size the panel. That's I'm going to 
call it number one, number one, number one. That side in the panel. Then I want to size the feeder. That would be number two here, and that would be number two here, and that would be the service in the feeder, number two. So at the end, you have to come up with the size of a panel and the size of a feeder. And I split it, and I want you guys to come up with the size of a neutral. Here's my neutral, my neutral, my neutral. And I, I'm just showing the neutral wire coming in, the neutral wire coming out to here, and a neutral wire coming out to here. So you're going to size also the neutral. Can you guys see the neutral? Let's just show it this way. The neutral coming this way, the neutral coming all the way up to the neutral, and the neutral coming right here. So you need to size. I'm going to call the neutral number three. The third thing that you need to do. So here's three. And here is three, and here is three. Okay, before I move on, everybody understand what we're trying to achieve from this load calculation? Cool? Does that make sense? What we're trying to achieve? We're trying to size this riser, the stuff for the riser, the feeder. So we're sizing, unlike the when we did the residential atom, do you remember we were sizing for how many when we did the residential? For five panels. Four for each apartment, one coming, and also what? The main. This one has only three panels. One lighting, one receptacle, and one main. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We got it. Move on. We're just uh, wasting our time. No? Yes? Okay. So keep this in mind as I'll PDF this one too. Keep this in mind, guys, as we move on. All right. So when you see these... Um, when you see this at the top here, I'm going to put them in red. When you see them and bold them, when you see them at the top, everybody understand what, what they mean here? We want to pull loads that can so come up with the size of these three panels. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We're cool? Okay. Now let's go and do it step by step. And I, rem I remember, guys, we will be doing, uh, we will be doing uh, these receptacles um, by hand, too. Okay, the first thing, the first type of load, and again, there's so many ways of doing this. This is only one way. The first type of load you have to accommodate in a commercial <laughs> building is the receptacle load. Cool? Can I have thumbs up to receptacle load? So your receptacle load is going to be coming from Article 220.14i. 14i. If you go there, here's what it tells you. It tells you, and you guys have been there, it tells you uh, for single receptacle, for single receptacle, you have to multiply it and, and, uh, by 180. Can you guys see that? This will be the number of your single receptacle yoke or duplicate receptacle yoke. You're going to multiply it by 180. If you have a quad, if you have a quad, you're going to multiply. Everybody knows the quad, four receptacle and one yoke. If you have a quad, you're going to count them as one and multiply them basically 90. Um, when you do that, you're going to multiply it by four. Can you guys see the four here? What's coming? So if you have a quad, oops, if you have a quad, you're going to take the, how many quads you have, multiply it by 90 and multiply it by 4. Anybody can know why 4? Because the quad has 4 receptacles on it. Cool? Before I move on, everybody understand where this calculation came to be? Where, and I'm, I'm throwing these numbers. By the way, these are hypothetical numbers, close to what we're going to have, but hypothetical numbers. So I have 219 receptacles. At 180, if you do your math, see the math, how the math is going on here, it gets you um, 39420 volt amp. Same thing, I have one quad at 90 multiplied by 4. Why 4? Because there's 4 of them. Okay, and then what I did, I added them up. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, exactly what we know exactly what you're doing? We added them up, right? Cool. Okay, so that's basically for the receptacle. Now let's go to the second section, fixed multi-outlet assembly. If you guys go to 220.14H, and please verify these, make sure they are right, H, it will tell you if you have a multi-outlet assembly, for every, if it's continuous, for every one foot, you give it 180. If it's non-continuous, for every five feet, you give it 180. Any question about multi-outlet assembly, if any? Here's a multi-outlet assembly right here. You're looking at it in front of you. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand from the from section um, all the way from section right here, 220.14H. If you have five feet, none. If it's non-continuous, it's not going to be used continuously. 
Five feet, 180. If it's continuously used, what are you going to do? A foot, 180. Thumbs up for Chad? Cool. All right, so that's the second step. Then you go over here. Here's, I'm assuming, and again, your project does not have multi out assembly just for the record. This is for you guys to, for exercise. You're going to build your own, right? You're going to build your own. So you're going to find, uh, let me go turn my, my uh, email off. Okay, so... Um, Okay. Scare, scare. Okay. Now I have. I assume that I have a fifty multi out assembly guys continuous. Multiply by eighty, and that will get you what? Divide by five because these are the non continuous. Can you see where we divided by the five here? Everybody can see where we divide by five because they're non continuous. You divide by five. Thumbs up, Chad. Cool. All right. Then the one underneath it. The one underneath it, my friends, is these are the continuous ones. 40 multiplied by 8 will give you what? Uh, 72. Do you divide by 5? No. Why? Non-continuous. It, it, it is continuous. You don't divide by 5. Can I have thumbs up? We know how this is done. Cool. So why do you divide by 5? Well, you, know, uh, you divide by 5 if they say they are non continuous because the first section is for non-continuous. The second one is for continuous. So we're assuming that the the 50 are uh, these are the non-continuous, the 40 are the continuous. Okay. All right. So you add them up here. Can you guys see how they add them up? And then we add the total. Can you guys see how these are the total of the multi-outlet assembly and the receptacle? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We just found the volt amp for the multi-outlet assembly and the receptacle. We added them up. Okay. Any question guys about the, up to this point, and everybody knows where the code references are coming from, then you total one and two, and can you guys see where they totaled one and two, and we came up with four, seven, eight, zero. I need somebody to get me um, thumbs up, yep, Chad, we know that they are totaled up. Before I move on. Guys, you're going to be tested on this, I'm going to go over it on the board too. But I wanna, if you get it now, you, you ace the test, basically. Cool? Move on, Chad, out of the receptacle. Okay, so now, now that we have uh, the receptacle, we added them up. Um, then, step 3.5, guys, for receptacle, you have to apply a demand factor. 220.44, Allah uh, requires you to apply a demand factor. And it says, here's a demand factor. Can you guys see the demand factor in red? It says, the first 10,000, leave him alone, sacred cow. Anything higher than 10,000, what do you do with that? 50%. Now for this, I would like to flash my NDC code book because we haven't been there and show you this table. And I want you, my friends, to highlight it because you are my favorite friends, except Brian. Uh, oops, did I say Brian? There you go. He's here, man. You guys didn't tell me that. Okay. Uh, if you guys go to 220, what did he say? 220. Um, 40. There you go. 220.44. Can you guys see there? Oops, not this. This. Uh, why does it keep moving on to that one? Here you go. Uh, 220.44. Please highlight this bit, boy. The first 10K, what do you do with them? Leave them alone. Uh, anything higher than 10, what do you do with them? Cut them by 50. Everybody's okay with this? That's for the receptacle load. Does it say anything about light? is only for receptacles cool so let's go snapshot it uh, take a snapshot at that one okay all right so that's um everybody got that one great close that minimize that okay minimize the code and minimize go back into our, our system so i want to make sure that everybody got that one then here's what we're going to do then then look what the math is uh let me put this one here and do a head skip here can you guys see what the math is then you take that 48 um almost 48 like 49,000 volt amp the first 10,000 stay alone can you guys see the math how you did the math and then then the leftover look look where you did the math here's where it says if you use the if, if anybody wants that function. If that number is less than uh, 
than 70, then put zero. If it's more than 70, then subtract them. Can you can see the function that you can use? If function to get you this number um, in math, in Excel. So this this guy, basically you're taking the four, uh, 48, uh, 48780, subtract 10 from it. Cool. Any question guys about this? How do you do in math? Use F I9 is less than 10. I9 is uh, right here. If this is less than 10, put zero. We don't care, right? If it's more than 10, then subtract them. Then subtract them. Subtract this from 10. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We know how to do that. You're wasting your time. Good. Uh, yes. So it's I9 less thousand comma zero comma, um, and then you bracket you put I9 minus uh, a ten thousand. Cool. That's a function. Okay. So now everybody understand where the twenty nine thousand. Then you add them up. You take these two after you do it and you add them up. I need the thumbs up, Chad. We fully understand that. Cool. That's it, directly from the code. You add them up. Okay, so now we are down to, we apply the receptacles. Now, because we're dealing with office, this is where I want you to wake up. That's the most confusing part. Now, we, we found a demand. We have a demand for the office, right? Here's my demand. But the code, the NEC code book guys say, if you have an office building, only office building, I want you to go to office and banks. You do the calculation that we did, and also you do one volt amp per square foot and you choose what? The largest for office building. So look what they're gonna do. That's where the confusion becomes. Then I need to go 3.2 is for office building or banks only. Can you guys see that? If you go to 220.14K, it will tell you, you have to take one volt amp multiplied by the square foot of the building and then compare the answer with the derated volt amp for the receptacle and choose what? The largest. Can I have, that's the most confusing one. Okay, only for banks. If you're not using banks, you don't use it. Okay, then look at that. I have 10,000, I have 10,000 square foot for the building multiplied by one, that will give me what? A 10,000. Based now, then right in here guys, you're gonna choose the max. Look what the function that I use myself is then I take max of these two numbers. Pick the here's the function I use. Max comma two cells. Max cell comma cell. You pick the max of these two cells. Can I have thumbs up chat? We fully understand that. Okay. Max uh, cell comma cell that or multiple cells it will pick the largest of the two. Because that's what you're gonna do. Now when you have application guys when you put your receptacle when you put this function here the max might be actually the twenty nine thousand. Right? Cool? Thumbs up, Chad. Cool? Okay. All right. Uh, then, can you guys see this cell, that shaded cell? That shaded cell? This is the shaded cell in red is the one that's done. You're done for receptacles. Done. That's the one that's going to be carried all the way down. That's done for receptacles, going to be carried all the way down. Now, here's my question for my friends. Now, uh, as long as we are on it, I'm going to do them all together, guys. So here's the load for all the receptacles. Can you guys see that? After I demanded it. Now, this is on the main panel. Can you guys see this is going to be on the main panel? Do you guys think also it's going to be seen by the neutron? What are we feeding? Receptacles. Do the receptacles need neutral? Yes. So all the load is going to be seen by the phases and the neutral of the main panel. Check. Then, Aaron, my friend, we're going to go to the receptacle panel. Is this load going to be seen by the receptacle panel? Yes, it's a receptacle load. So it's going to be also seen by the receptacle panel. So what do you do with that then? You put it where? Can you guys see where we put it where? We put it under the receptacle panel, and then we drag it also. Do you guys see it's going to be seen by the neutral too? Yes or no? Would it be seen by the neutral? Are you guys with me? Am I, is it confusing? Serious, is it confusing? Carrie, my friend, is it confusing? Yes, no? Yeah. 
Complex stuff? Huh? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's what you guys are designing is going to do, right? So that, but any question about up to this one? When we cut the 29, any question about the 29? How you get 29? What's your formula there? Six. Which one? SP. SP? SP times 180. It's 99,000. Yeah. 50 times, it's which, uh, which, yeah, that one right there. It's 150 times 180, divide by, uh, we divided this by yeah. 5. Oh, yeah, we divided by 5. We divided by 5, okay? Can you see the formula right there? Divided by 5. Okay, so we got the receptacles, we got the receptacle load, guys. Um, when you get the receptacle load right here, you're going to pick the largest of two. And I can't emphasize, this will be seen by the neutral. And this also will be seen by the receptacle panel and receptacle neutral. Now, here's my question for um, Alex. Would that load be seen by the, who's Alex? Max. Am I losing it here? Uh, Joe, since you're laughing. Would that load be seen by the lining panel? Would that load be seen by the lighting panel? It's a receptacle load. No, so what do you want to put? Put big, big fat zero. Then, would that load be seen by the receptacle, the lighting panel two? No, what do you put? Big fat zero. Any question guys about that? So you are building your sheet to size these three panels simultaneously as you move forward. What about the up panel? I know I'm the what? Uh, erase that one. We we don't want to put UPS panel. Thanks. Forget about the UPS panel. Okay. I want you guys to assure your friend Chad, you're gonna that up to this point, everybody understand how we do the calculation for the receptacles, right? Can I have yes, Chad? No. Go over it again. I know Jeff. You know how to do it. Everybody else, Adam, my friend, Andrew. Tell me to shut up. No, no, no. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 29. Okay. So what you do, guys, you take 180 volt amp multiple battery receptacle, the rate in the first 10, leave them alone, higher than 10, cut by half. Then you compare that with one volt ampere square foot for the whole building. Okay, Joe? All right. Um, now, the second step that we did here, guys, is um, so we have office building. Now choose the largest calculation. We did that one. Unknown receptacle. Step number four. Step number four. Are you guys with me here? Step number four. I see. I feel like there's two things to do. For some reason. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. So step number four. Um, if you can see it. For step number four, we have unknown receptacles. Now unknown receptacles, guys. Because remember, they're telling us we're gonna. They're gonna add to the building five thousand square foot there. Do I know how many receptacles are there in that building at this point? I haven't designed it yet. So because I don't know it, here's what I do. I take, um, where's my, it's step number four, one volt ampere square foot, right? So take the, that one. Can you guys see where one volt amp multiplied by five? Why 5,000? They're telling us this building that will have an addition of 5,000 square foot. So then you take this, multiply by 5,000, and you stick it in here. Now, can you guys see the 5,000? Is there anything else that I can compare the 5,000 to? Can I compare the 5,000 to anything else? Do I have actual physical receptacles? No. So because of that, I pull the 5,000. So the 5,000 will be seen by the main panel. The 5,000 will be seen by the neutral. And the 5,000 will be seen by the receptacle panel. Can you guys see that? And the 5,000 panel will be seen by also what? The receptacle panel neutral. Here's my question for Aaron. Do you think the 5,000 here, the receptacle load, would they be seen by the lighting panel? No, thank you. Will they be seen by the lighting panel neutral? No. See how things start showing up, guys? Makes sense. You put zero, zero, because they're not going to be seen. Uh, they are fit from the receptacle panel. They're going to be seen by the receptacle panel and the main panel only, right? Any question about this step? 
So this is how to accommodate for this receptacles in the future, future receptacles. Now I want the smartest bulb on the tree here to tell me where did I came up with uh, 219? 219 duplet receptacles. Where would this number come from? The 219 duplet receptacles. Close. When you guys lay out, when we built Revit yesterday and we put our, our sheet, when you design it, what are you going to do next week and the week after? We're going to be throwing receptacles. So what you're going to do, um, Jamie, my friend, you're going to add your receptacles that you installed them and drop them right in here. These are your design, the ones that you installed. For the time being, I put 219 just to make the, to make the formulas work. Can I get you guys to understand that these numbers, this num these numbers will be coming from where? Your design. Right now, we haven't thrown any receptacle, Joe, have we? No. Not yet. So for the time being, do me a favor. Use these numbers until we get your real numbers in your plug in. When we drop them in Revit, Yes. Good point. When you drop, you can, uh, you can run, um, you can run a calculation Revit that counts all the receptacles for you. Absolutely. Okay. Any question about this? Any question about this one? So, okay, so now we got that. We know where this is coming from. Andrew, why it's not working there? You told me it works. Okay. Oh, this is because it's a different. Okay. All right. So I, uh, I really, really, Brian, my friend, I really want somebody to assure me that up to step number four, we are cool, Chad. Step number four is cool. So we got rid of all the receptacles. Can I move away, guys, from any other receptacles? Can I move away? Now, as you move forward, if you have rece outside receptacles, uh, parking lot receptacle next to the fixture, to the uh, light, what do you do, Jeff? Add them up as regular receptacles. OK, I need a gentleman to assure me, Chad, we understand fully what happened to the receptacle load, these two here. We understand that these are the day one receptacle, 20, uh, 29,000, and future receptacle, 5,000, and they will be seen by the neutral and the phase of the main panel, the neutral and the phase of the receptacle panel. Any questions about this before we move to the next step? That's it. That's all your receptacles. All your receptacles. Cool? Could you add that 10,000 or in that step uh, three, two, two to the total from the... Uh... No, you're three, one, you just... no, you, you, which 10 here? The square footage 10,000. Ah, uh, square footage 10,000. No, you choose the largest. Remember, we choose the largest right here. You did the calculation based on the number of receptacle, the calculation based on one volt ampere square foot. Can you guys see that? And we choose the largest, the max. We choose the largest. Cool. Okay, so I want to move on with the. You guys are going to sick of, of, of me talking about load calculation because we believe you guys as designers you need to know that. I mean, no question asked. General lighting. General lighting. You guys remember when we went to general lighting? We went to table 220.12. So I want uh, my friends to go with me to general lighting and let's go to the NEC code book. If you guys grab your NEC code book and all the way to, to table um, this table. 212. Cool. I want you, I know we highlighted this. I want you to also look at the following. Here's my table 212. It says general lighting mode only. And we're looking at office building, right? Everybody can see where the office building is. I need the genius person to tell me what's the square foot, the volt ampere square foot. What's the volt amp, uh, Andrew? What's the volt ampere square foot for this building that you can use? You can hear? Okay. Three and a half. Anybody have? Grab your code, guys. Get your code with you. Three and a half. This is three and a half. Can you guys see where it says B next to it? That's where it, it tells you that you have to have one volt ampere square foot for receptacle. Okay. So that's it. Three and a half. Everybody got understand where the three and a half came to be? Now, if you go down, um, if you go down, then demand. Can you demand? Demanding. Demanding the light. Is there any demand on the light that's coming from an office? I can demand the dwelling, the hospitals, hotels, motels, 
warehouses. Do you see any demand for office building? So what, what demand do you apply for the office building? What demand do you apply to office building? 100%. 100%. We apply a demand of 100% for the office building. Any questions? Any question about that one? So everybody understand why we use 100% for the light load for commercial building, and what's the volt ampere square foot that we use? Okay. All right. Okay. So let's um, let's go and do the lights now. For lights, it gets interesting. Now, lights, actual light. First of all, you have a line that says actual light. Um, actual light, for my lights, I'm going to do um, my actual light here. Okay, here you go. Right in here. Can you guys see the actual light? Okay. For lights, I want you guys to remember, you do two calculations for lights. You do two calculations for lights. Calculation number one, 3.5 volts ampere square foot. You put the apply. Calculation number two, you do the um, the actual volt amp of the fixture. The actual volt amp of the fixture. And you choose what? The largest. Now, when I ask you, Joe, what is the actual demand volt amp of the fixture that we have? Do you have any idea what type of fixture that we're using? I have no idea. Well, you have little pumps, but do we know the volt amp of the fixture yet? No. So we saw a number there, but do we know the square foot of the building? Yeah. So we're going to compare the square foot of the building to the volt amp of the fixtures. Okay. So this number here, let's skip. Put this one in there. There you go. Because my pen is on. So this number, guys, is coming from, look at, the, can you guys see where this number is coming from? Can you type this cell? This is coming from Calc2G21. Calc2G21, here is uh, Calc2, and here is G21. Can you see that? Now, you guys have this as a PDF, as a PDF file. The second PDF has this. Let me summarize it very easy. You take 3.5 volt ampere square foot, you do the calculation, put it aside. Then, these are the actual fixtures that you will install in the building. Hypothetical values. The actual fixtures. Here's how many fixtures of type A. Here's the volt M of type A. And it's continuous load or not. And you add them up. So you can see the count, the number. Um, and you keep adding them up. And this will be the number of the actual volt M of your fixtures. Everybody understand what this number is? Now, now. Darren, do you know this number yet? No. So what do you need to do? Go build an Excel sheet similar to this, put hypothetical numbers in there. So you are, when we get into finishing the project, you go plug the, your numbers because your fixture is going to be labeled A, B, C, all the way. So put numbers, build it like this, and then put numbers in there and make sure it works. Cool? If, do you guys know how to link mathematically link two sheets in Excel? Very easy. Look at this. So, for example, if I want this sheet, can you guys see this sheet? So, delete this sheet. I deleted this sheet. Cool. Grab it. Now, I want to make it equal. I want to make this sheet equal another sheet. Very easy. Hit, hit equal and go to the another sheet that you want to pick it up from and, and, and just pick it up. And then hit enter. Now, it will link two cells in two sheets together. Do you guys know that? Anybody have done that before? piece of cake, you can link multiple sheets together. Cool. Equal, go pick up the other cell anywhere in Excel in the same file, it will, it will link them together. Okay, so so this, uh, I want somebody to tell me, Chad, we, we understand that this number, these two numbers are the um, the square foot of the building. Uh, so here's my actual and then based on the volt M of the building, Based on the volt amp of the building, uh, is general light 220. You're going to go all the way to, uh, where is this one? This one here. Okay. The volt amp of the building. Here's my volt amp. I need to, um, oops, go to the this one here. So general lighting, we got my uh, actual. 
I got my code. Let's go to the code one. There's a few of them because of the uh, the square foot guys. Um, so here's my um, here's my three and a half. Can you guys see that? Now this is the code three and a half multiplied by um, uh, 100, um, by ten thousand give you thirty five, right? So you are comparing thirty five with seven uh, with thirty uh, thirty five thousand with seventeen thousand. Cool. <coughs> Is this uh, in KVA? Let me just see, make sure it's in KVA. Um, okay, the sum of all of these. Uh, this is given in volt, kilovolt amp. Okay, so this is, we might have to, just to make sure that we are comparing apple to apple, multiply this by a thousand. So we're comparing apple to apple. Okay, so I added, I multiplied by a thousand to make sure we're looking at apples and apples. Okay, so can you guys see this is the actual? That's a lot of actual. This is the actual, and this is the, the code. So what do I need this one to do? The max, can you guys see the max? This one will be the max, I can't emphasize. This number underneath it, this number is the code, this number is the actual, and this number is the max, of these two numbers. Can you guys write yourself a note? When you guys submit your load calculation to me, it would be great in this project. So the last thing I want to see when you guys submit to me and look at it, I see you don't do the math on that one. Please. Because you, uh, I don't want to sit there and repeat myself one more time for you. This is very important. You're going to take the three and a half of the by by ten and then the actual and just take the max. Pick the maximum of the two. Cool? The maximum of the two. Now, um, now, uh, Joe, my friend, and Adam, ninety percent of the time, the code will be maximum more than the actual. Anybody knows why? Because of the energy code. The energy code requires you right now to put one volt amp per square foot. The code allows you what? Three and a half. Da, do your math. So, what do you think the actual is going to be? What? Almost always less than the code because of the energy code, efficient fixtures, okay? So as we, so we did the calculation, we end up with the code, and then we size based on the code, though. We size based on the code. Before I move on, I want somebody, one of my friends, to tell me that we fully understand what happened here. Um, start with Aaron, my friend. Does it make sense, Aaron? Yes, no? More or less? Okay, so for example, taking a three and a half, multiplying by a uh, uh, ten thousand, and getting this number—that's not a big deal, right? Yeah. Where did you get the three and a half? That's from the code. Where did we get the uh, the ten thousand? That's from the project that we have, right? Make sense? This number here is just collecting all these volt amps of the fixtures that we're going to be using which we don't know yet, but we threw numbers anyway, okay? All right, now I want somebody who is genius um, or so. Um, okay, I want, I want somebody to tell me, guys, what do you think, uh, Zach, my friend, or anybody else, can you guys tell me now I have the 35,000. Where do you guys think the 35,000 is going to go under which, car, which, uh, which panel? Do you guys think the lighting load is going to go under the receptacle panel? No. no, zero. About the neutral of the receptacle panel? No, zero. How about the lighting panel? Would the lighting load go under the lighting panel? Can I hear a yes? Yeah. So you're going to go, here you go, so you, you paste it. Um, or the easy, easier thing is to put equal, oops, as, as to make this one equal and this one. Right. So now, can you guys see that this this 35 is going to go under the the uh, lighting panel? No, not not one more. Thank you. This is not it. Um, one more. So I'm going to say equal, and this one, and enter. How about how about you guys think this one is also going to go under that, the neutral? Yep. 
equal. So make sure you use equal. Did I copy them or use equal? No, I use equal for all of them. Yeah, equal, equal, equal. Yeah. So can when you do the calculation, it changes it. Any question guys about that? See how easy that is. The color coding, yes. It doesn't have to be color coded. Just to explain things to you, probably. But the dark ones are the ones that you're gonna carry. If you get into the habit, let's just use this one. Uh, thank you. It's going to be also like going under the service panel neutral. Absolutely. You got it. So we're going to go grab these. I'm going to make sure they are. Uh, oops. They are like this color. Okay. So these are the ones that I'm carrying guys across. These are the ones I'm carrying across. I'm using this color to indicate the stuff that I'm carrying across. Okay. Any question about the lights? Any question about the lights? General lights. Okay, now, do you guys see any demand for the lights? Is there any demand for the lights? Any demand for the lights? There is no demand for the lights. The, the second one that we need to carry, guys, can you guys see the, uh, the 5,000 square foot? Do you see the 5,000 square foot? The 5,000 square foot, we're going to multiply it by three and a half, right? Why do we want to multiply 5,000 square foot by three and a half? Future, we have future lighting. So this is what you get. Then um, let me go carry all the way through. Okay, now, Darren, my friend, do you think this will be seen by the neutral of the service, this number? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, do you think this will be seen since it's light? Do you think this will be seen by the, re the receptacle panel? No. Receptacle panel neutral? No. Do you think it's going to be seen by the, pa the lighting panel? Yes. How about the lighting panel neutral? Yes. Can you guys see that? Now we loaded this. We loaded them into the main panel as well as the, uh, as well as the lighting panel. Now, Aaron, why did we put them on the lighting panel? They are lighting load. They are lighting load. Cool. Okay. Any question guys about this? Any question about the lights? The general lights? Any question about the general lights? Up to step number six before we move into the track lights. So to summarize, just to give you an idea um, what we what I've done. Can you guys see that? Just to summarize, give you the big picture, the big picture. Um, what we did, guys, all this junk here, where's my, all this junk, if it went, off, went away, all this stuff here came up with a load, came up with one load for the receptacle. That's the most important thing. The one underneath it came up with a load for what? A one load came up with the, um, for the lights and about multiple loads. And you can see how we're filling the service panel and we're filling the receptacle panel, and we're filling also the um, the lighting panel. Any question is, so we accommodated for uh, main panel, um, for uh, receptacle loads, as well as lighting loads in these steps. Receptacle loads and lighting loads. Uh, the lighting demand load is 100%. We don't demand it. We don't cut it like by 50% or, or anything. We don't cut it by 50% or anything. Ah, why do we put zero on here? No, uh, so number six. Oh, number six here? Because lighting demand load for an office building, we don't demand it. The code does not demand, it's not like a... Always on or it's not, it's on. It's all, yeah, thank you, it's always on. Unlike, with, uh, unlike the dwelling, where you, know, you can argue that you don't turn them on all at the same time. Yep, they're all on. Absolutely. Any questions about the light? <coughs> the lighting load? Okay, let me um, let me go one, over one more load and give you a quick break here. Um, okay, so here's my load. I want to go next, guys, from the track light. Track light 
the NEC code book, and these are directly, now imagine, if you think this is complicated, now imagine the poor group of the students with the first five digits, guys, I gave them the code number, and they have to build the thing from scratch. Could that be hard to build this from scratch? Longer, but not hard, right? Um, now, track lights. If you have a track lights, and I, I trust that you guys can go read it, track lights, 220.43D tells you if 150 volt amp for every two feet um, of a tra uh, track lights. Every two feet, how many volt amp are you going to give it? 150. Why? Because the code says so. Okay, so that's piece of cake. Uh, signs, so let's do the track light. So here's my track light. Um, let me just highlight it so I can see where I am here in the uh, business. Okay, here's my track light. I have 30 feet of track light multiplied by 150 and divided by, multiplied by 0.5. Can you guys highlight, because you don't see it in your sheet. When you do this step, can you write yourself a note that you have to cut it, cut it by half? Okay, write yourself a note that you have to cut it by half because for every two feet, not one foot, right? So you cut it by half. So that's what the, where this number came to be. Cut it by half. Then this is your total. And that's your total for the track lights. Now go underneath it. Sign 220.14F. It will tell you each commercial building have to have a sign, at least one sign, and and the sign have to be calculated at what? Anybody can see that? 1200 volt amp. Cool. Okay, so that's from the code. So here you go. Here's one sign, and we're gonna uh, uh, give it what? 100, uh, 1200, and that will get you this and its total to this. Does that make sense, guys? Just one sign. Now let's go down to a special show windows. Show windows, 1200 volt amp for each linear foot for a show window. Um, so no problem. So we're gonna come over here. I have 10 feet of show window multiplied by two, uh, 200 equal to 1000. And I'm gonna carry it down. Does that make sense, guys, what we're doing for each one of these? And then for other special lights, then parking lot, 9.5. Can you guys see the parking lot, guys? 9.5, parking lot, light. Now, uh, parking lot, the parking lot light, there is nothing you can do any, anything about the parking lot other than adding the volt amp, guys. So for the time being, I throw 1,000. Later on, you guys will take the volt amp with the fixtures, add in here. So here's my parking lot volt amp, and I just threw the volt amp right here for the, for the fixtures, okay? And um, for the fixtures, through them here. And then the last step, all the continuous load here, because all the lights are continuous load, you add them all up. Can you guys see how it added all these loads? All these loads and multiply them by 120. Multiply them by uh, 125. We'll get you this number. The 21, all of them added, yeah, 5, 4, 50. Um, and then... 5, 4, 50 added together, and this is where you get your total. 5, 18, 12.5, all added together. This is what's going to be seen by the, the receptacle panel. And uh, it, this particular one is going to be by lighting panel. And this will be also seen by the, um, by, uh, by the neutral. Yeah, this is the neutral and by the, the lighting panel. Okay. What I did, guys, I added them here. If you do it at this level, anybody knows what, if I do it at this level, what am I missing here? One thing I'm missing. 1.25. I'm missing the 1.25. Okay. So, so this is your, your total for 1.25 total for lighting. Total for lighting. Okay. Um, that's why I'm going to go actually, since I'm adding him, I don't want to add him twice, guys. So, uh, especially the lights. I forgot the lights. We have to multiply them by 2.5. So I'm going to go just get rid of the lights. Only the lights. Get rid of them from the other panels because you have to multiply it by 1.25. So lights uh, start at which column? Uh, let me see where the light office start. Uh, receptacle right here. Here's my light. Start right in here. So I'm going to go just get rid of um, anything. 
uh, is that a square? No, okay. Office building, choose lights. Okay, choose the largest of NDC or actual. No, this is receptacle, general light. Right, 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 right down here. Right, right at five. Five and a little bit above. Okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, um, for this, this is for the receptacle. I want to just get rid of these, these two lines I felt. Because we have to multiply it by 1.25. Otherwise, everything else is good here when we added them on the receptacle panel. Okay, so what, what we do then is we add them here. Can you guys see that this is the total added here? Do you guys think the neutral is going to be the same too for all the lights? Yep, your neutral is going to be the same. Um, this one will be the same. So the lighting load right in here will be identical. It is my lighting load. So here's my receptacle load, here's my total lighting load on, on, on the two, in the two panels that we have. Any question guys about the lighting load? So you're going to add all your lights and multiply it by 1.25 way at the end. Multiply it by 1.25. So we're adding them to add both um, 35,000 from the both ends of the square and the general lighting load? Uh, give me one second here. I'll. Uh, I know that. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. Give me one second. So between five and five point three. Yeah. Okay. So five is your actual, and five point three is. Uh, is yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So I let me show you guys what get added here at the at the bottom. We are adding not this this one. Here's what you get. You do add. Can you guys see my um? You when you add them, we have the all the lights. You add the total of all the lighting steps. One, two, three, four. That's easy, right? If you go up, carry my friend. Um, you add the largest. Can you guys see how you add the largest of the two? And we should add this one too, the, because yeah, we should add should be added here. Uh, why it's missing this number here? Uh, let me just see if it's it's included. Multiply the amp volt. No, I get the shooting. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know what? I am missing one. I'm missing multiply the volt amp unit for the type of the occupancy general lighting. The 1750, yep. So what we're gonna do here, you go you put add and you're gonna add this one. Absolutely. Because that's also gonna count, right? That's gonna completely count. Okay. So we got the, the max of these two. We got this and we added all the steps. Any question guys about adding the lights? Here's the, my step for the lights added all across in the neutral of the main panel and the neutral of the lighting panel. Do you want me to go over it again? Tomorrow though. I will do, guys, I will do it by hand tomorrow. We're going to do it by hand. These, all this calculation will be done by hand too. So hopefully between the, if you get it now, you can sleep tomorrow. Um, if you don't get it uh, now, you have to wake up tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to give you guys five minutes and I'm going to continue with the other loads. Five minutes, please, because I really don't need to continue with that load. Thanks. Okay. Um, so what we did, we went through the receptacles, we picked the receptacles, we picked the lights. Now I'm going to go all the way down to a few other calculations. Uh, if you guys go to track, we did 7, we did 8, we did 9, Not we did 9.1. Everybody understand that 9.1, Joe, that 1,000 for the parking lot, you guys are going to add it, right? Okay, so we got the light. I want to go to step number 10. Step number 10, um, there and my friend is continuous loads. We multiplied all the lights by that step. 
and we end up carrying the lighting load into the receptacle panel in the lighting panel as well as the main panel. Now I'm going to go to step number 11. Can you guys go to step number 11 with me, please? It says kitchen equipment, 220.56. Multiply three or more pieces of equipment by the table 250.56 demand factor. Use 220.19 for household cooking equipment used in instructional, institutional, we don't have that one. So I only have one fixed in place equipment and it's 120, I'm giving it 20 amps, right? And I'm multiplying 20 amps by 120, I'm giving 240, okay, that's it. And I'm, I'm totaling the 240 here, right? Can you guys see that? And I'm, I carry the 240 to the neutral and I carry the 240 to the receptacle panel and I also carry the 240 to the, um, to the receptacle panel neutral. Why? Because I'm gonna have one receptacle that's gonna be feeding the dishwasher and that receptacle is gonna be coming from the receptacle panel. It's a dedicated circuit and I'm giving it 20 amps. That's judgment, okay? It's a dedicated circuit. That's easy. Now let's go to the heating cooling. I'm gonna to go to step number uh, 14, guys. Step number 14 says heating and cooling. Okay, I want you guys, this is directly from the project. I have uh, cooling, um, compute, what is that, uh, cabinet unit. I have two cabinet unit heaters. Can you guys see that? Ca two cabinet unit heaters um, and uh, one horizontal unit heaters. Two cabinet unit heaters, CUH, and two HUH. Um, Horizontal, and by the way, where am I giving these numbers here? Right here in the sheet that you guys have. And these two, I have the amps for each one of them. Can you guys see the amps? And I have two because there are two of them. Here's the amps for each one of them. Uh, I have a, boiler, uh, a gas boiler control circuit, and I assume 4.2 amps for it. Also, this is given. Cool. This is the only thing associated. All the voltages that are running at... Um, uh, Jeff, my friend, are 120. These, these are just fans, basically, real little fans. So what I did, I added them up, guys, as a, to a total load. So multiply. Can you guys see what, what happened here? You multiply the amp by the number of the equipment. This cell is multiplication. 120 times 5.8 times 2. This one, same thing, 124.4 times 2. Uh, 120 times 4.2 times 1. Add them all up. See how I added it all up? Everybody can see why we added them all up right here. Okay, that's all the heat load that you have. The building is being heated by gas, natural gas. Okay, right underneath there, now we're going to compare the heat to the cool and choose the largest. You guys remember that? Heat cool to choose the largest. I have a condensing unit, um, Zach, two condensing units. Each one of them, one condensing unit at 81.6 amp, the second condensing unit at 4.4, 44.8. Where did they get these amps? Right from this sheet. Can you guys find that sheet here? Right from the sheet that you have. Now, they are 208 three phase system. How do I know they are 208 three phase system? The sheet says three phase system. So everybody knows what the product is here. Then this cell, this cell basically is multiplying all of them together. 28 times 1.73 times 81.6 times 1. Cool? And adding him up. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand what we're doing. We are doing the heat. We're doing the cool. We're adding him up. This is the most important cell that you guys are going to pay attention to the one. This is the max. Can you guys see that? This is the max. This cell give you the max of the heat or the cool. Okay? Can you guys see that cell? The max of the heat and the cool. Okay? So this is the one that we're going to be carrying, the max of the heat or the cool, the heating or the cooling system, the max of either the heat or the cool, right? And um, all these, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to delete this number. They're not going to be in here. Um, I'm going to delete these. They're not going to be coming any, anywhere from here. So, okay. So that's it. So which number am I going to be carrying for the main panel? Anybody can tell me which number is going to be carried for the main panel? The max. So that cell here, I'm going to go gray it like this. Here's the cell that I'm going to carry. Now let's go to the neutral. Now let's talk neutral. Now for the neutral guys, the neutral is, is slightly uh, different. So for the neutral, 
first of all, any any question about the 45.5K? Any question, guys, the largest of the heat or cool? Add him up, pick up the largest piece of cake. Now the neutral. Now here's, uh, who's gonna be my friend? Jamie, are you my friend? Yes. Try. That's good. Um, now, Jamie, if you have a three-phase load, would it be seen by the neutral? Just three-phase? No. So can you guys get to understand that one? We have a three-phase system now. So the two chillers, carry the two chillers that we have, they will not be seen by the neutral. Cool? All right, so now, now let's go up to the heat. So we know for a fact the chillers are not going to be seen by the by the, the heat. So let's just go back up for the, how about the heating? Let's look at the heat. Do I have 120 for the heat, Darren? Are the heats running at 120? Yep, are they going to be seen by the neutral then? Yes. So I added all the heat, and you put them right on the neutral. Can you guys see that number here? Right on the neutral. The only thing is going to be on the neutral is the heat, the heat only. And I dropped it right here. I just made make sure I dropped it right here. Okay. Everybody understand why the only thing that's carried on the neutral is the heat. The only thing that's carried on the neutral is the heat. I actually want to delete that one and make sure that this cell equal this cell. Okay. So the only the only thing that's going to be connected by the neutral is the heat. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that where the chillers are thrown. Okay. That's it. So that this big cell is the one I'm going to carry all the way down. Now let's go to a motor load. I call it motor load. Step number, uh, we got the cool. Oh, there is a special cooling, 12.1. Can you guys look at 12.1, please? 12.1, we, we have a special cooling. Special cooling is typically for computer rooms. They run summer and winter. They are not coincidental loads. They're dedicated cooling units for the computer room uh, because you have to cool your computer. It's a file server. Um, and it's a one at one multiplied by seven point twelve point seven. Where did the twelve point seven come to be? Right here. And you multiply it by two hundred eight. Why do you multiply it by two hundred eight? Because it is a two hundred eight single phase. They tell you it's a two hundred eight single phase. Two hundred eight single phase. Two hundred eight single phase. Cool. So if it's a two hundred eight single phase, <clears throat> so here's my two hundred eight single phase. And then I, I, all what I did is just multiply them here. And then since they are two eight single phase, they will also from a three phase system, they will be seen by the neutral, right? Because it's unbalanced, they will be seen by the neutral. Um, so that's why I carry them right here for the neutral. Um, for the neutral, and I don't want to put them on the on the, I just want to carry them on a the neutral on that panel. Any question guys about this? Any question? They will contribute. To the unbalance in the neutral because they don't have the third phase they're just going on two phases okay all right so i carried them here so this is the the basically the, the step that i'm going to carry uh, let me just ask you guys uh, a dumb question here do you think the cooling unit will be seen by the lighting panel that's a dumb question no do you think it's going to be seen by the neutral of the lighting panel no. Do you think it's going to be seen by the receptacle panel? No. The neutral of the receptacle panel? No. Okay, so that's I put zero zero for that. Now, file server. The file server is going to be fed from directly from the main panel. Do you guys think it's going to be seen by the receptacle panel? Zero. Uh, neutral? Zero. Uh, lighting panel? Zero. And neutral? Zero. So I'm putting zeros for the other panels because these equipments are fed directly from the main panel. How do I know if you, when you guys go through this one in detail, you're going to find that's what we're, we're feeding in from the main panel. Any question guys about this? So let me go to the motor. Let's go to the motor steps. Here's my motor steps. Okay, the motor steps guys, you're going to take the largest motor, multiply it by 1.25, add the full load current of all the other motors. Okay, so let's take motors. I have a boiler pump one, boiler pump two, recirculating pump, exhaust fan one, two, three, and air handling unit. These are, um, Aaron, my friend, they're coming from where? Right, this sheet. Okay, so here's the amps for each one of them. Please verify the amps are right. Please verify that the amps are right. Okay, and then uh, what's three phase, we put 1.73 for any load that's three phase. Anything that's not three phase, 
guys that usually the multiplier is one right for it or actually it will be nicer if you leave it open here okay then then you just multiply it right here is for the three phase multiplication and take the largest boy right the largest the larger of all these can you guys see how you took the largest of all of these and you multiply it by 1.25 and you add the total can you guys see what happened so look at this cell this cell adding them all up just adding them as is jamie does it make sense then the cell underneath it take the this cell is the larger of one say, i61 through i67 and uh, you can use max you really can use max here the function max and then you multiply by 0.25 on the largest that that will give you this and then you add the largest motor to the rest of them and that will get you what get you this number and that's the number that you're going to be carrying downstream the number that you're going to be carrying downstream any question guys about this number any question about this number the largest motor um okay now let's go look at the neutral let's go look at the neutral i want you guys to look me in the eye and tell me if the phase is three phase it's not going to be seen by the neutral can you guys see that first load pump one zero pump two zero it's not seen by the neutral how about these loads would these loads be seen by the neutral yep they're all 120 and then that's why i put them in here and i added this is the maximum max of all these multiplied by 1.25 and this is how you add it together and i want to delete this here because i don't want to put them in anywhere anywhere else so then this will be zero 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 all these equipments are fed directly from the main panel they are not fed from the receptacle panel or from the lighting panel let me repeat myself one more time when i did the the, the sizing for the main panel you do it for the neutral and the phase for the phase guys all of them are going to be calculated for the neutral um carry do you do you understand why we put zero zero next to the boiler pump one and two because they're not counting but the rest of them they're on 20 they will be seen right so what here's what i did this red cell here can you guys see this red cell is actually adding him up right the neutral then this red cell is taking the maximum of the neutral and multiplying it by what multiplying it by 0.25 and the last cell guys is adding it taking the 25 uh, the 25 percent plus all the neutral load any question guys about how to do the motors because now now we're done yes sir they all what the motors yeah uh, they could be delta or y but but you don't need a neutral if even if it's a y motor <clears throat> you just don't bring in neutral it's a balanced load okay so that's for both delta and y though no. uh, yeah. yeah i multiply this by this by this by their number okay now let me go to uh, largest motor we got the largest motor up and running here right we got the continuous load um you didn't do anything here with the continuous load i didn't know why we kept it um i don't know why this cell is i'm going to delete this cell doesn't belong anywhere cell 14. Uh, add all other continuous loads into the calculation at 100% multiply okay i'm gonna i'm gonna delete well i'm gonna leave can you guys see that step number 14 is not used everybody can see that step number 14 is not used yep. okay so what do you, does it hurt your feeling if i go delete it i'm gonna go delete all these cells so you're not gonna have step number 14. it's not used basically okay all right so this it's gonna screw up my calculation though so might as well leave it at least for the time being because it's uh i, I don't want to mess with the calculation because it's doing that my calculation okay then we're done there's light at the end of the tunnel step number 15. <clears throat> step number 14 guys is not needed step number 15 total load amps we're going to total everything 
Okay, so here's what I want you guys to look for what we're going to be totaling. Do you see that cell here? <clears throat> and I'm going to make this all these cells red here. Uh, not red, uh, red this. And I'm going to make them uh, black. Okay. This is the, the cell that's going to add all of them together. Okay, so um, let's go look, Jeff, what we added. I want you guys to double click on that. So we added the total of all the motors and the total of the HVAC, the largest of the HVAC, the largest of, so you can, the, um, let me just minimize here. Maybe we can see it better. There you go. Okay, this is the cell that I'm trying to see what, what I did here for with it. Uh, double click. Can you guys see with the, what this cell? So I added the motor, all the stuff from the motors, all the stuff from the HVAC. Can you see that? The server. And all the stuff from the largest cooling or heating. And then the stuff from um, the kitchen. Can you guys see that? And all the lighting. Remember that lighting stuff? We calculate the lighting. Um, and and nothing not and uh, and then we with the receptacles the future receptacles can you guys see which cell is carried as well as um uh, why do i carry this one i shouldn't carry this one because it's carried down oh. downstream um so that cell should not be there uh because i carried it downstream right under the five seven eight nine and okay i'm i'm making a mistake with this cell here uh this is uh 23. i want to get rid of 23. that's a piece of cake duplicate okay enter let's do it one more time um okay can you guys see it i carried the load for all the motors jeff right can somebody verify that i carried all the loads for the server that server 12.1 and then uh for 12 step 12 i carried it right here right and then I carried it for step number 11, kitchen, right? And then I carried it for cooling, uh, heating, the largest, um, no, that's this step is uh, for oh, continuous, low, continuous light, the light, the continuous stuff, all of them together, all the lights. So I don't have to worry about lights anywhere. Then I went up and I just carried the receptacles for future as well as the receptacles day one, day one and future. Can you guys see that? Day one and future. Okay. I said again. Uh, well. Okay. Here's what he added. Let me just go one more time. Uh, step number thirteen. Do you see that number here? Are you cool with that? Okay. And then go up a little bit. We added step number this one, which is the server. Cool. And then you go up a little bit. We added the step for the AC unit. Only one that step, the maximum of the AC or the heat. Okay. I don't know what number you have it. And then we added um, this one is for dishwasher, the dishwasher step. Then we added all the lights, one location, all the lights, one location. Yeah, is that what you're calling at number 10? Okay, gotcha. Yep, I thought you were using cell 10. Okay, yep, number 10. Okay, and then nothing for the light because we lumped something all down. Then you go up and we added the receptacles for future and the receptacles day one. Okay, everybody's okay with this? Then hit enter. Did you guys come up some something similar to my number? Or am I the only one who is uh, dreaming here? Okay, to get to that point. Okay, but you can see where the calculation is. Um, you can see where the calculation is, though. Now I'm going to go to the neutral. I'm going to go to the same. I'm going to do the same thing for the neutral. Make sure I calculated the neutral right. Um, so I don't know why did I get the twelve? Yeah, I counted the neutral. Um, I counted. I did not count. Let me see where I get, I picked these neutral, that's right, these are neutral, neutral. This is also neutral load, the total, uh, right, yep. This is also neutral, yep, uh, yep. And this is, uh, uh, I didn't pick this cell, and I didn't pick this cell. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm going to go, guys, I'm going to go pick a plus. I'm going to add the, that cell uh, here. And plus, I'm going to add this cell here. And enter one more time. And I can help you with that one when you go through it. So here's my uh, calculation here for this. Right, we did them, and this calculate this, calculate this, this. Two plus signs in the row, two point three two. So, oh, sorry, thanks, bud. And no one of us is awake. Okay, so here's my neutral. So you guys, your load is going to come up with something similar to this. I'm sorry. Okay, let me just get uh, total load. Uh, step 15 okay here's the load guys now remember uh, so this is the total load for this uh, for the neutral as well as for the phase uh, I'm gonna go do the total load for the recept for the uh, receptacle panel let's go at it see can you see the total load for receptacle panel um, here's this these two numbers basically right three numbers right that's good right then I'm gonna go for neutral the total load for neutral is gonna be the same and the total load for the lighting panel look at the lighting panel guys it's only one location only one load on the lighting panel right nothing in it cool that's easy uh, here's my lighting panel how about my lighting panel neutral it's gonna equal to this done so I got here's the most important calculation here at the bottom guys I'm gonna put them in red here all of them um and so now here's the volt amp now i want to i want you guys to remember we're using a 283 phase system so there in my friend here's how i got the size of my panel then i take this number divide it by which is this number here divided by 1.73 divided by 208 and that that's how you got your five um your five, oops, you got your five, 520 amps. So your panel is going to be 600 amp panel, give or take. Can you guys see that? That's the size of your panel. Now look at the neutral. The size of your neutral is going to be 330 amps. So you're going to size your neutral for what? 330 amps. Um, and then the size of your receptacle panel is 102 amps. So you're going to go to the next standard panel. That will be what? One, 125 amp panel. Uh, the size of your um, oh, how does how come that this is um, okay this is wrong here uh, let me see uh, okay this is right this is should be the same calculation like this okay well the same calculation uh, this one should be the same calculation like this there you go okay so the lighting panel is going to be 205 and the receptacle fan is going to be 102 and the main panel is going to be 520. Done. Done. You guys, if you follow that one, and Chad's examples tomorrow, um, you got one of the most important things, which is load calculation. Here's what I'm going to do with this sheet after I've done it. I'm going to PDF it and put it in the network for you. Cool? As a sample. Would that help? PDF it, put it in the network. But before I do that, now remember, this is not the final calculation. Yours is going to be slightly different. I might have missed something. Please, you don't have to match my numbers. Um, so make sure, here's what I want you guys to check. You see these numbers here? Please verify that these numbers are right. Because over the years, here's what happened over the years. We used to run it at 480. So there might be one of these numbers still running at 480. Okay, now let's go carry the... Okay, we got the, the amps. Now right underneath it, guys, I would like you to right i don't know where we said that one so size the service and the feeder conductor use the table i want to i want you guys to put here right in here um uh, these are the serve yeah the service can you guys see here's a this is 600 amp service this one here it's going to be 125 amp and this one here is going to be 225 amp okay these are the panel si the sizes of your panel 225 125 and uh, 600. Uh, then you're going to size your conductor. I have one of three sets, depending if you want to parallel or not. You're going to size uh, you size for a 600. So for the 100, we're going to carry one odd, 
one uh, is one art good for 125 should be for two uh, 225 um, two conductors two art for the 600 we're gonna have 600 one set of 300 uh, for 600 how many um, 600 uh, how many KCM um, to get me 600 anybody has a calculate has a toy uh, a 310.16. I need 600, so I need to parallel two sets. Let's just say two sets. Um, I would say 350. One of, let's just say one of two. I want to take two sets, and that will give me, right? Uh, 350. I have 350. Cool? Two sets of 350, and the neutral, the neutral is going to be um, uh, one of two, one set of two, and the neutral is going to be size based on what? Now we're parallel. Uh, if you cut this by half, guys, that'll get you what? A 330 divided by half, 165. If you go 165, you're going to get uh, 165, you're going to get two R. So that will be a two art. Two art. Okay? That will be your two art. Two art um, neutral. Two art neutral. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? So we size the panels. The last thing I'm going to do before I let you guys go. Is I want to size the uh, grounding electrode conductor. Grounding electrode conductor. Um, and this will be actually, um, let's call it one either grounding electrode conductor, grounding electrode conductor slash equipment grounding conductor. Grounding it because some of them are equipment, some of them are. Um, Okay, so for 600, uh, can, can somebody go to 250.66 to size it, guys? 250.66. For six, uh, well, for, we have two runs of 350, so that would be 700. 700, my friends, over 600 uh, through this, that will give me two out. So this boy is going to be two out. Basically the same thing, yeah. Two art. That will be a two art. And how about the equipment grounding conductor? So that will be 250 to 122 for 125 amp. Uh, that will be number six. Yep. And the other one for 200, that will be number four. Yep. So here's your size of all your equipment directly from the tables and so forth. So the tables that you're going to be using for this, guys, is. Um, size of grounding electrode conductor at the service um, as well as equipment ground conductor. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So here's the size of the whole building. What I want you guys to do is to build the sheet, make sure it works. I will PDF this one, put it in the network for you. That's the most updated one. So it'll give you at least some reference. The way I did it, Anything that's carried all the way through here, guys, that's the number that we're carried downstream. Okay? So, any comments, any questions before we leave this topic? What I'm going to do tomorrow, um, Andrew, my friend, <clears throat> and I'm going to take a, a hypothetical commercial, big commercial building, and guess what? We're going to do this by hand on the board. Is that would that help, Larry, guys, hopefully, between this and this? Put them together the other way first. I, I, I got you. Gotcha. I'm sorry. You, should use... that, that you guys pushed me because yesterday they were building the sheet. I thought since they're working on the sheet, might as well just start working on the sheet first and then we'll do it by hand. Huh? Sorry, go ahead. On like tomorrow. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow's example will be exact. Like on, the, on the actual whiteboard with markers, not the smart board, so that we can actually like see the, the, the stuff. Like, what, like white whiteboard? I don't know how to write white, white, white board by you, all right? I hear you. I hear you. 
Uh, yeah, because I mean, it, it'd be nice for something like this for it to kind of like yeah. be there for more than thirty seconds before you like flip too much. Let me do this here. Sink in. Yeah. I don't like the white boy though. I have to move. Huh? We can. We can flip it. I'll uh, I'll see what I can do. All right. Brian, you're my friend. Or or just I mean I guess you put them on the PDF. So. They're all PDF. That's the nice thing about when you write it down. You have a copy of them. You write it on the board. It's gone. You know, done for good. The we, nice thing is, all these are PDF. Gary used to take pictures of the whiteboard on his phone. I used to do that before we had the smartboard. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Um, would that help, Darren? Does that help a little bit? Clarify. I know, Aaron, my friend. I know, it's still foggy a little bit. I promise you. By the time we do it by hand, and I go over it with your team, it will be clear. Okay, so what my expectation, guys, from you today, yesterday, um, you know, by Friday, you have to print the full set, uh, E1 through E10. I know some of you already did that. We walked through yesterday how to add other stuff into, so we're done with setting up Revit. What I would like you guys to do is build your riser if you're ahead and work on Microsoft Project. Um, I don't want to lecture for another hour about Microsoft Project. I usually do it. If you are ahead, why don't you grab me like you guys did yesterday, and I'll walk you through how to start your Microsoft Project individually. How about that? If you want to start, that's the next step is to start Microsoft Project and build um, build the sheet in Microsoft Project. Okay. Um,